Did they seriously just ask that? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times celebs mocked interview questions. You so, look like you've just come off like an island or something. You're very tan, very tropical. I mean, you know, I'm ethnic. For this list, we'll be looking at awkward, humiliating, and embarrassing interviews where the celebrity couldn't ignore the stupidity of the questions being asked. You know what? I've been my mistake. I, you know see what? what? See, you're, you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Jesse Eisenberg. Oh boy, we're gonna start with a doozy. The moment Eisenberg sits down for an interview with Romina Puga, things get awkward. So Freeman plays a magic debunker. Freeman? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Freeman? Yeah. What, are you on a baseball team with him? Yeah, he's yeah. a buddy of mine. Okay. The actor was promoting the film Now You See Me, leading Puga to go straight to magic tricks. Eisenberg is clearly unimpressed with Puga's interview skills and criticizes the writing on her hand how she casually referred to Morgan Freeman as just Freeman, and even called her the carrot top of interviewers, a comparison that's very hard to find a compliment in. Do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes, horrible. Well, um, you were like the uh, carrot top of interviewers. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. No, and it's a good thing. It's I'm gonna a good go thing. Cry because... now. No, don't cry now. Eisenberg, or Jesse Eisenberg, did humor her with a card trick, but the atmosphere remained painfully awkward. Your attention. Number 9. Quentin Tarantino Quentin Tarantino movies are famous for their violence, so it's safe to say that the director is not only an expert on the subject, he's also pretty sick of discussing it. But why are you so sure that there's no link between enjoying movie violence and enjoying real violence? I don't, I, well, I'm gonna tell you why I'm so sure. Don't, don't ask me a question like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not biting. I refuse your question. Why? Because I refuse your question. I'm not your slave and you're not my master. Since the beginning of his career, it's been a lazy, within arm's reach recurring topic. But Krishnan Guru Murthy opted to go there anyway, asking if Tarantino thought that violence in his movies encouraged violent actions in real life. Tarantino not only refused to answer the question, he also refused to explain why he wouldn't answer the question. In an attempt to be highbrow, Guru Murthy continued to push the issue, making it more and more awkward, and Tarantino more and more angry. I have explained this many times in the last 20 years. I just refuse to repeat myself over and over again because you want me to. For you and your show you're, you're and your ratings. Okay, well, no, it's not about our ratings. Number 8. Anne Hathaway when Anne Hathaway starred as Catwoman in Dark Knight Rises, she needed to get into comic book shape. And boy golly, didn't the interviewers love to ask her about it. You are in phenomenal shape. Thank you. You're, you're very... You, well, you, you're always in great shape, but you had to make sure you were in perfect shape for this one, didn't you? <laughs> Extras Jerry Penicoli was especially interested asking for details on her diet, her fitness routine, specific exercises, and the actual fit of the suit. It got to the point where Hathaway had to ask if he was planning on going on a diet to try and fit into a cat suit, because surely that's the only explanation of why he'd be so interested. No, no, no. I, no, no, seriously, that, we well, have to talk you. about this. What, what do you want? Are you trying to fit into a cat suit? I might be. You are? Oh, okay. Um, Lucky for Penicoli, Hathaway was able to find the humor in the situation and ride through it. Number seven, Mayim Bialik. We get it, when working the red carpet at any award show, you have to interview a lot of stars, and in-depth research becomes difficult, which is how we get moments like these. How many people think that you can solve calculus at the drop of a hat? Um, I actually was trained in calculus okay. uh, for several years. Yeah, I'm a neuroscientist, so you may not have known that. Yeah. I'm I knew, you were, I knew you were some kind of scientist. At the SAG Awards, Mayim Bialik was asked if a lot of people assumed she could do calculus because she portrayed Amy, a neuroscientist on The Big Bang Theory. We are using it to map brainwave patterns and then converting them into electrical impulses that could be used to control anything from wheelchairs to robots. Based on that ring on your finger, I'd say you're pretty good at controlling robots. <laughs> well, it turns out that yes, Mayim Bialik can do calculus because she just so happens to be an actual neuroscientist in real life 
a fact that she happily shared with the interviewers. She is actually a neuroscientist. Oh, neuroscient? I'm glad I asked. She's, she's been planning for this role her whole life. Exactly, yeah. Well, just for 12 years, but yeah. Number six, Cara Delevingne. Nothing puts a woman, or anyone for that matter, in a good mood like being told they seem exhausted and irritated. I saw you in London talking a couple weeks ago on TV, and you seemed a lot more excited about it than you do right now. Are you just exhausted? Oh, uh, no, I mean, I'm still very excited. In Cara Delevingne's case, these comments came at the end of an already awkward interview on Good Day. Maybe I had a bit more energy. It's the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Things started off with the host talking down to her and obviously not understanding Delevingne's sarcastic sense of humor. She tried to lighten the mood by explaining it was just early for her, but when the host told her to take a nap and drink a Red Bull, there was no saving the interview. We'll let you go then. How about that? Right. We'll let you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? <laughs> Cara Delevingne, thank I you know. so much. Number five, Matt Damon. Oh boy. If you want an interview to go well, maybe don't insult someone's work ethic or their motivation especially if that person's Matt Damon. In acting, you, there is there isn't job security, right? There's an incentive to work hard and be a better actor because you want to have a job, so why isn't it like that for teachers? When an ambushed journalist insinuated that the only reason the actor is such a hard worker is because his career doesn't have job security, Damon didn't appreciate the insinuation. It's not an incentive, that's the thing. So you take this MBA-style thinking, right? It's the problem with ed policy right now. There's this intrinsically paternalistic view of problems that are much more complex than that. Matt Damon is by all accounts an intelligent man, so his explanation on why her question is stupid is suitably eloquent, and gave her a few moments to reflect on her life choices. Given that he was attending a teacher's rally, he even managed to work her limp question into a succinct vessel of support for educators. A teacher wants to teach. I mean, why else would you take a salary and really long hours and 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 do that job unless you really love to do it. Number four, Jim Carrey. Apparently, what's up is a very loaded question for Jim Carrey. When interviewed at New York Fashion Week, Carrey explained he wanted to come to the most meaningless place he could think of. I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could come to and join, and uh, and uh, and here I am. They're I mean, you gotta admit, it's completely meaningless. Kat Sadler tried to defend the event, saying it promoted icons, but Kerry just went deeper, saying he didn't believe in icons or in anything really. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I don't believe in icons. Uh, I don't believe in personalities. I believe that peace lies beyond personality, beyond invention and disguise beyond the red S that you wear on your chest. He later contextualized the bizarre reaction, saying he was having a bit of an existential crisis, and at the moment, he didn't know who Jim Carrey was, which was hopefully enough to give Sadler something resembling closure. If you go deep enough into those characters, you realize that your own character is pretty thin to begin with. You know? And then you suddenly have this separation and go, well, who's Jim Carrey? Oh, he doesn't exist, actually. Number three, Jerry Seinfeld. This interview went down as one of Larry King's worst interview moments in his epically long career, so you know it's going to be a doozy. While interviewing Jerry Seinfeld, King brought up his eponymous sitcom and made the mistake of clarifying that it hadn't been cancelled. Lasted how long? Nine years. 180 episodes. You gave it up, right? I did. So. They didn't cancel you. You cancelled them. Jerry's reaction is one of pure outrage, accusing King of not knowing who he is and reminding viewers just how successful the show was. You're not aware of this? No, I'm, I'm asking you. You think I got canceled? Are you under the impression uh, I, I got canceled? You? Have I hurt you, Jerry? I thought don't, that was pretty well documented. Don't. Let's get this straight. No one cancels Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld cancels them, just like Larry was trying to say. Which one's supposed to be the funny guy? Oh, he's the comedian. <laughs> I, I'm just a regular person. No, no, he's just being modest. <laughs> Number two, Tom Hardy. After playing a gay man in Legend, film media began to ask questions regarding Tom Hardy's own sexuality. At a Toronto Film Festival panel, he was asked by a journalist from the Daily Extra if he found it difficult to publicly discuss his sexuality, a question the actor found a tad offensive. Do you find it hard for celebrities to talk to their sex to talk to media about their sexuality? What on earth are you on about? <laughs> After some back and forth as to why one would feel the need to ask such a thing, Hardy dismissed it with a simple thank you. Are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. 
<laughs> Why? Why? Um, Thank you. you. Okay. The outlet went on to defend the question, as they are a gay and lesbian news source, but Hardy has defended his stance as well, saying it was not an appropriate place to talk about such a personal issue. I was wondering if you find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. I don't find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. Before we unveil the most cringe-worthy number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Why, why did you say, I read that you said you felt you're not proud to admit that you've had work done? Why not? We really want to talk about that now? <laughs> now, were you able to wear undergarments? If you're you the, like the fifth person that's asked well, no, that because it, What is going on? <laughs> What, since when did people start asking each other about, in interviews no, about their no, underwear? No, because it is such a skin tight. Here's I'll why. I'll leave it up to your imagination. You're gonna walk home with more than maybe just a trophy tonight. I think lots of men. I'm not gonna walk home with any men tonight. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go hang out with my friends and then I go home to the cats. No men allowed. Men get me in trouble, I don't. What do you say to your fans who are desperate to know about you and your co-star Kristen? What, what can you tell them? <laughs> what can you tell them about it? Tell, they can tell, I can tell them to watch the movie. We can't ask that question. <laughs> well, you can't ask that question to What's the guy. It's, a, it's, it's a, his co-star. It's, it's a fair like, question. It. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix famously loathes interviews, even the good ones. In his own words, he absolutely hates them. So if you have the chance to interview him, you better keep it interesting. So what's going on? Joaquin, directly in front of you, mm -hmm. uh, Chris with GMA Philippines. The movie obviously is about the Joker, but it goes beyond that. It's really about um, the, the mental state he was in. Can you tell me a little bit about what research or what kind of... Uh, what you did to prepare for this, because this was really an intense performance. Um. Following his outstanding performance in Joker, Phoenix faced renewed attention from the world's press and clearly quickly became tired with the same set of questions, and he let everyone backstage at the Golden Globes know it. Isn't this old news? Isn't this old news? Didn't I, didn't I, I feel like I've talked about this for six months. Asked a by then fairly routine question, Joaquin dismissed it initially as old news, before laying into it with sarcasm-fueled, ultra-thorough detail. And thank you so much for asking that question. Um, my publicist is telling me I need to, get, need to go home. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.